What do you say, church? What a, a wonderful shepherd we have. I think my daughter is grateful that my wife is done singing. You know, there are times when things are, are difficult, and then we just run to the arms of Jesus, just like Chloe just did, and he gives us peace, doesn't he? Amen. Well, happy Sabbath to each one of you. A little ringing up here. It's good to see all of you here. I'm grateful for what God is doing. God is really moving in our church. I, I sat down the other evening and was just walking through all of the different ministries that you all are involved in, and I was amazed. We've got Renovate Health, which is running right now, and we have a number of you that are in Renovate Health, and God has just uh, been changing. We have people losing weight, getting off their medication, reversing their diabetes. It's just incredible. Their faces are lighting up. They're, they're feeling better. They're, God is moving. We have um, the Supper Club that, that Jennifer is running every Wednesday evening. God's been moving there. We've got homeless ministries and uh, the ministry you just had there that's going on with the homeless and Jason I think you were just there yesterday uh, taking them some pizza and um, we've got we have Samantha's ministry that is connected with a number of the leaders in our community we we have what are the pathfinders are doing and then we have a new one that just started up Wednesday evenings at 7 30 we have basketball for the that the youth are doing over in the school every Wednesday evening after prayer meeting Church, God is moving, what do you say? And He is coming soon. And He's using this church and He's using you to prepare the way in a community that needs Christ to know that He's coming soon. And I'm grateful for that. I'm thankful for what you are allowing God to do. And, and not to mention... 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, there is a radio station run by Strong Tower Radio that our church helps keep running that is proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ every single day and every single moment of every single day. How many of you listen to 104.7? Praise the Lord. It's, it's such a blessing to hear what God is doing there through that radio station. Well, as we begin this morning... I would invite you to bow your heads and ask the Lord to speak to our minds as we open His Word and meditate on the healing Christ. O oh, Shepherd Divine, as we bow before Your throne this morning, we're grateful that You are our Shepherd. Whatever challenges we may have gone through, Today, we can rest in your grace to lead and guide us and to protect us. We're excited about what you're doing in our church and what you're doing in our lives. We're grateful for the transforming that you're doing. And, and just now, we know you want to do another special work in and through us today. Banish Satan and his angels from having access to this sanctuary. We ask that your angels will press close, that you will hide me behind the cross, and that Jesus alone and his message will be seen, be felt, and be heard. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. It was about midday. A young lady was, maybe not young, a lady was making her way out of the town that she lived in. As she was leaving the walled cities that she was in and making her way out, she, she was going at a, a, on an errand and she was going at a particular time of day to make sure that not many other people went with her. I can imagine in her, mind's eye, in her mind as she's making her way out, she wasn't looking up with confidence, she was probably walking with her head down a little bit. You see, she's had a hard life. 
Over the last number of years, she has been in and out of different relationships, and as she's moved in and out of these relationships, she's trusted one person after another, and and these people have, have treated her in ways that have left her having to go and find someone else that hopefully she can emotionally trust. Each person that, each time this has happened, it's been another heartbreak, another emotional Correct. You know the feeling when, when you've trusted someone with your, your emotions and you've, you've built a relationship with someone and then they walk away from you or they, they treat you in a way that, that forces you to break off that emotional relationship. There, there's a loss of trust. There, there's brokenness and there's pain. She, she's had a number of these in her life. And the community that she lives in isn't one that, that would embrace. You, you know the kind of community. It's where they talk about you without talking to you. You know what I'm talking about. Of course, none of us, I'm sure, have ever experienced that. But, but they're talking among themselves about, about her, her, her brokenness and her, her messed up place. And so she, she's just found it easier. Just don't go and talk to them. Just, just don't interact with them. Let me go and do my own thing. And, and hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll just leave me alone because it hurts too much to see them and their put-together families and their, their good relationships and their, their good children. And for her to know that every one of the relationships she's gone through has been a shattered mess and now she's in a relationship with a person and she's not even married to that person. She's just living with them. And that one's not going so great either. It's midday. You find her story in John chapter 4. Turn there if you would. I'm talking about the healing Christ this morning. We're going to look at two stories of the healing Christ. We could go through many, many, many stories, and we may peruse through just a few of the other stories that there are to look at, but we're talking about the healing Christ today. And and the stories that we're looking at here in John chapter 4, John chapter 5, and we'll peruse a couple of others as well. I, I hope you walk away with an understanding that the healing Christ wants to be your healing Christ this morning. Whatever you've gone through, the Jesus that healed before wants to heal you today. Someone should say amen. John chapter 4. When you're there, if you'd say amen again. (laughs) Amen. John chapter 4. Christ is on His way to Jerusalem. Or to Galilee, I should say. And on His way to Galilee, He passes through Samaria. And when he gets to Samaria, you understand, I think you guys probably remember the story. The Samaritans were someone that the Jews didn't have any relationship with. And Jesus is a what? A Jew. And and so when he comes there, the, 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 the Jewish rabbinical rule said, we're not supposed to have any access with these people. We're not supposed to be around them. But if you need to buy food to be able to have sustenance, you can do it. But make sure you do it as rudely as possible so that they don't feel like you're trying to get a relationship. Just get in, get your stuff, and get out. And so they, they stop there by Jacob's well. The disciples head into town, and they're, they're on a mission. They don't want to be associated with these Samaritan people. So they go in, they're getting their food, and they're getting out. And Jesus is sitting by the well, and he sees in the distance this woman that we've been talking about walking towards the well. He can see the droop in her shoulder, the brokenness on her face. He can tell that this is a woman. Of course, as Jesus, he's turning the pages of her life. And he's seeing that that she has been in these relationships that have left her shattered and feeling like a shell and broken. And as he turns, he sees her coming to the well. He's there at the midday. And I would would present to you that Jesus planned his trip just to be able to intersect with this broken woman because he loved her. The king of the universe orchestrates situations and circumstances in every event of our life to bring us to the point where his love will intersect with us. So there they are. And as she arrives there, Christ begins to talk to this woman. John chapter 4. Let's let's pick up the story here. Verse 5. Are you there, church? 
So he came to a city of, what's the word there, church? Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Joseph's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus by the well. It was about the sixth hour. A woman of Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, give me a what, church? A drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. Now, it's interesting to me. Christ doesn't come into this woman and say, I see your brokenness. I'm here to heal you. He instead approaches her in a way that's disarming. He says, give me some water. Now, where this, this area of the world was, because water wasn't as plentiful as it might be here in Michigan, where we're literally surrounded by water. It was actually considered, water was a, a sacred duty that anyone who needed water, you should do everything you can to get them that water. And Christ knew by asking this woman to give him water, he began to break down the barriers that stood between he and her. And he was doing it to break down the barriers, not just to break down the barriers, but because Christ wanted to be the healing Christ to this woman's brokenness. And so comes to the woman. They begin to talk. She says, hold on a second. How is it that you, being a Jew, ask of me, a Samaritan, for water? Now the point of the sermon isn't to get into the huge dynamics that were going on between the Jews and the Samaritans. That's a story for another time. But, but, but Christ begins to have a discussion with this precious woman. And as he goes, begins to talk with her, they go back and forth in questions, and Christ begins to, to begin to, to build a trusting relationship by being interested in her life. She begins to open up about the brokenness of her past. And, and then when Christ begins to offer her the water of life that would heal her brokenness, initially she pulled back and tried to shift the topic. Christ to let her do that. And then he brought it back to the issue at hand. You need me to heal you. You need the water of life. And the brokenness of that woman came in contact with the healing touch of Jesus. And in that moment, Christ made her whole. Someone should say amen. Now what's the point I want you to walk away with from this story and then we're going to go to John 5? It's very fascinating to me how Christ did ministry. And it's not just fascinating from a, oh wow, look at this. He did this and then He did this. It's fascinating because this is not only how Christ ministers to me in my brokenness. In church, we all have areas of brokenness, do we not? But, but it's also what He calls me to do as I'm in my brokenness and He heals me from my brokenness and He transforms me into a child that reflects the King of the universe. He then calls me to go and find other people and minister to them in their brokenness. And show them the, the love of Christ and help them in that place uh, out of love, not pity. Oh, made us notice the difference. Out of what church? Love, not pity. Out of love to come alongside them and lift them up as a fellow human and as a brother or sister who is there to lift them before the throne of grace where they will find healing and strength in the place of their brokenness. In our society today, church, there is a lot of brokenness. And I don't think I need to tell you that. I'm guessing many of you have seen it and you may know it personally from experience. Around us, we have people who have been in and out of relationships and, and have experienced brokenness in those relationships. They have had trust shattered again and again by, by people that they trusted and they gave their emotions to. We have people who are, are mentally cracking under the strain and pressure of work. We have a society where there is an epidemic of brokenness. In church, we have a Savior who has the healing hand to lift the place of brokenness into the restoring grace of Jesus Christ. It's not just the woman by the well. You may know a co-worker that needs a healing touch of Jesus Christ. How do we bring 
the healing touch of Jesus to someone in their brokenness. Well, I'll tell you what doesn't work, and that's to tell someone, well, just get over it. Have you ever had someone tell you, just get over it? And I'll tell you, I am probably very guilty of telling people that. What people need. If Christ had told this woman, you know what, get over it, how would that have gone over? What was she looking for? She was looking for someone who would sympathize with her in her brokenness and then point her to the Savior who would restore her to complete and perfect health. And Jesus was the answer to that brokenness. Go with me to Luke chapter 4. We're going to head to John 5 in just a moment, but I want you to go with me to Luke chapter 4. When you're there, if you'd say amen. We looked at this, I believe, last week. Luke chapter 4. Christ has just stood up in the synagogue to preach, and as His custom was, He went to church every Sabbath. He was there. He ministered on His way to church. He ministered after church. But in church, on Sabbath, He was there with His people to worship the King of the universe and to worship God. And And even He as God was there to worship. Luke chapter 4, verse 18. When you're there, say Amen. Christ stands up and He begins to read. And He describes His mission. Notice the mission of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has what, church? Anointed me to preach the Gospel to who, church? The poor. He has sent me to heal who? The brokenhearted. To proclaim liberty to the what? To the captives. And to recovery of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are what? Oppressed. This was the ministry of Jesus Christ. He was to come and to find people in their brokenness and and to restore them back to the place of holiness and restoration. And church, this morning, Jesus is here to heal you in your brokenness and to restore you. I don't know what your background may be, but I know a Savior who can restore you, whatever it may be. What do you say, church? And that Jesus, we talked about how He's the personal Jesus last week. We talked about how he's the humble Jesus two weeks before that, or the week before last week, two weeks ago. That personal, humble Christ, who is also the most powerful being and is the God who created all, will come and anoint you and heal you. We find Christ not just healing emotional pain. Go with me to John chapter 5. Find a man who has been a paralytic for 38 years. I've only been alive 36. He's had this for two years longer than I've been alive. Over that time period, he has tried every means he knows how to receive healing and strength. It's ironic to me that the story we're about to read happens on Sabbath at a place called Bethesda. Notice the verse there. Let's look at it. John chapter 5, verse 2. Now there is... Are you there, church? Now there is in Jerusalem by the the sheep gate a pool which is called in Hebrew... What's the word there, church? Bethesda, having five porches. Now, I've preached on this before. Bethesda means house of grace. This was the place where you went if you needed help in your brokenness, if you needed healing, you would go there. And here's a man that has come to the place that says house of grace in its name. It, it's a pool where people of all shapes and, 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 and types of, of physical issues came because they believed in the magic of the pool that would restore them back to health if they just got into the pool. It's a Sabbath morning. Jesus is on his way to church. He hasn't actually been to church yet. He's on his way. And his morning meditations as he's walking along, he comes to the pool of Bethesda. And he sees this man in his broken place. 
who is given up all hope, and he looks at the man, we read it in our scripture reading, and he says, would you like to be made well? And the man comes up with all the excuses why he can't. While I'm going in, another gets down before me. No one's there to put me into the water. Lord, uh, the magic of the pool, I can't get into it in time. Humans aren't able to help me. And Jesus looks back at him. He doesn't argue with him. He just says, get, get up, take up your bed. And what's the next word, church? Walk. And the power of God speaks to a person who's physically in a place of brokenness. And that man doesn't argue anymore. He begins to put his will behind the words of Jesus. And as he wills to move, the, the healing power of Christ flows through his being and his muscles are restored. His, his bones are restored. His ligaments begin to work. And that man who for 38 years couldn't move under the power of Jesus Christ gets up and church, he walks because we serve a healing Christ. Go with me to Matthew chapter 9. Actually, chapter 8. We don't have time to go through each one of these stories in detail, but I want you to walk away with a clear point. Matthew chapter 8. Christ has just finished the Sermon on the Mount. He's gone through these, these three chapters that are powerful, laying out the purpose and the, the essence of, his, of the Gospel in those three chapters. And then as He comes down off the mountain. Christ moves right from talking about the power of the Gospel to demonstrating the Gospel by ministering to people's needs in their places of brokenness. Matthew chapter 8, are you there, church? Verse 1, uh, let's start actually in verse 2. And behold, a leper came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, make me clean. Jesus put his hand on him, touched him, and saying, I am willing, be what, the, what does it say there, church? cleansed and what's that next word immediately his leprosy was cleansed a leper comes into his presence and jesus instantly heals that leper and he is cleansed from his his disease verse 5 a, a centurion servant is sick he asks jesus to heal him and jesus heals him verse 14 Peter, one of Christ's disciples, mother-in-law, is sick. And Jesus comes in and he, he feels the felt need in that home. He heals her and raises her back up to full health. Verse 16, many more come to Christ and every person's need Jesus fulfills. Keep going. Verse 23 Christ calms the storm. Verse 28, two demon-possessed men who have mental and spiritual brokenness come into the presence of Jesus, and Jesus casts the demons out. He sets them free. Verse chapter 9, verse 1, there's a paralytic, and Jesus gives him health. There's a tax collector, and Jesus forgives him and calls him to be his disciple. Verse 18, there is a family where there is a girl, chapter 9 and verse 18, a family that has lost their daughter and Jesus heals, restores her to life and heals a woman who's had an issue of blood for a number of years. Verse 27, the blind men are healed. Verse 32, the mute are able to speak. And verse 35 come, summarizes up the ministry of Jesus. Verse 35 of chapter 9, are you there, church? Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, villages teaching, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and what's that next word there, church? Healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Praise God. We serve a healing Christ. In fact, next week, don't miss the sermon next week. We're going to be going through how every divinely raised up movement of God from the time of the children of Israel down to our day, including the raising up of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, always has had the healing health of Jesus Christ working in and through His people. Because Jesus wasn't just one-off showing 
that he cared about people and was healing them. Jesus came to demonstrate how the Godhead works. The Godhead wants you to be healed. Go to th keep your finger here in Matthew 9 and 10. We're going to come back there in just a moment. But I want you to go to three, 3 John. 3 John, verse 2. When you're there, if you say amen, it's right there before Revelation. It's this very, very small book. So if you go to Revelation, go back two books, and you'll find the third epistle of John. I hear those pages turning. I love to hear those pages turning. Third, three John, third John. And since there's only one chapter, we're going to go straight to verse two. Third John two. Are you there? I think it's on the screen as well. John, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, articulating the heart of Jesus Christ. Read it with me. John says, says Beloved, Beloved, I pray that you may, reading aloud with me, may prosper in all things and be in health, just as your soul prospers. The desire of the King of the universe is that we may be able to prosper and be in health just as our soul prospers in Jesus Christ. He wants us to not be suffering. Now, I understand there may be some of us that, that, that experience that physical healing of Jesus in heaven someday, but I do believe that as the church, which is the hands and the heart of Jesus Christ, we have this great opportunity to join Jesus in showing the community around us the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. And next week, as we look look through John Wesley and, and many others through history from the Old Testament down through to our day, I believe you will see uh, in, in just this profound way, it's been extremely moving to me as I've studied with it, what the healing ministry of Christ can look like today. Because church, what Jesus did then, He wants to do now. Someone should say Amen. Go back with me to Matthew chapter 10. We're going to end here. We've just summarized. Christ came to a woman who was broken and He healed her. Christ came to a man who had been sick, had been a paralytic for 38 years and He healed him. We then briefly ran through chapters 8 and 9 of Matthew and saw story after story after story where Jesus came to people. There's a lot of ringing. That people came to people in their brokenness and He healed them and restored them. Now I want you to go with me to Matthew chapter 10 and verse 5. Notice what it says. These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, Christ is sending them out to do ministry. What does He say? Preach, saying... The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8, what's the first word there? Heal the sick. What's the next word? Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out. Freely you have received. Freely give. There's a community broken around us. Jesus wants us to be the hands and feet for Christ. You know, maybe you walked in today and you've struggled and have been struggling with feelings of, of emotional or psychological brokenness. And Jesus, the great King of the universe, wants to come alongside you and he wants to say, would you be made well? Let me heal you. Today he'll do that if you ask. There may be someone in your life that is hurting. 
the healing Christ would love to have you be the hands and feet of Jesus to minister to them and show them the compassion and the love of Christ. Well, there's two points to walk away with from this sermon. One, Jesus what is personal, humble, and faithful in his healing. And the second is that God calls us to go and heal in the brokenness around us. I'm going to ask you to bow your heads with me as we close. Father in heaven, In the world around us, and maybe even in our own lives, we need the healing touch of Jesus. We need him to come close to us, to restore us, to lift us up into his presence. I pray that you will come close You'll touch every heart in life. And that, Father, you will spiritually and in every way heal us and lift us up into your presence. We lay our lives here into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing our closing hymn, 286, Wonderful Words of Life. heaven, we thank you so much for the wonderful, beautiful words of life that you speak to our hearts and our lives 
And how in your strength we are restored and recreated into the image of Jesus Christ. Bless every person that is here. Let your spirit rest upon them. May the power of your grace support and sustain them. And as we leave this place, may we have the presence of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you all so much for coming and worshiping with us today. The deacons are going to dismiss you in just a moment, but uh, I would like to remind you, if you want to come up here to the front and spend some time in prayer, you are more than welcome to do that. For the rest of us, let's keep it quiet on our way out. And remember, 4 o'clock, outreach, 6 o'clock, Vespers. God bless you. See each one of you then. Happy Sabbath.